What you're seeing here is a demo of a fully autonomous manufacturing robotic cell. And what it demonstrates is an end-to-end -end capability of reproducing human operators. So it's actually a virtual operator that can go into a factory of tomorrow. And what you're going to see here now is a autonomous robotic planning. So this robot has no knowledge what it's going to do apart from two things. It knows a CAD model of the cup and you write on the cup with your personal handwriting a number and we simulate industrial quality assurance by detecting the cup, detecting the number and then the robot knows the task to match the number with a number inside the cell and if it finds a corresponding number it will do the path planning autonomously, move the robot, pick up the cup and move it over to the number. And then that's what I'm going to initiate now. And in this case, we have selected a five. So it should be detected as number five and then be moved over to number five on the deck. And this involves many different things. It involves advanced path planning, object detection, and reasoning about the best way to move the robot from the current location to the actual task location. So what it does now is to move around like a human to see the object from different angles to determine to a high degree of certainty that this is the object that I'm tasked to work on. And then it reasons about the, the number. Uh, is it, uh, what number is it? Ah, it's that number, okay. And the way we do this is that we apply different neural networks. That's a class within the machine learning library that allows us to do the planning. So the motion is planned in real time as needed, which means that you can have a discrete manufacturing of single parts. You can change the manufacturing flow from large numbers to a single uh, number manufacturing. So you can do part by part by part if you want to. We can switch uh, the numbers and we can switch the tasks every millisecond if we want to. So it gives you a tremendous flexibility in your factory. And also what we're able to do with this is that we can interact with industrial frameworks like the GE Predix systems. And they can give a task to this robot cell saying that please manufacture um, 100 of this part, do quality inspection and tell us the result. So we are a very advanced edge uh, utility that sits in the production line. So we're in the actual manufacturing line, creating values like double the speed of production. We can increase the quality assurance. So it's a very flexible way for the factory of tomorrow. We can try with uh, a number six, which should then be placed uh, next to the five one in this case. And what's interesting here is that the robot, as I said, and the robot controller has no knowledge of the task. It's being given by the intelligent vision system that we at Unibat provides in real time. So this is really taking uh, machine learning to the edge, out to the actual manufacturing floor in the assembly lines. So there is a lot of software behind the scenes, but the software is reasoning. So you can give this system a, a meaning, you can give it a task, very similar to a, a high school engineer, for instance, or an operator in industry. You would tell it that, can you assemble this chair? And the engineer would know what a chair is and it would know how to follow an instruction. And this is very similar to this uh, system. It reasons about drilling or welding or grinding or assembly or whatever you want it to do. We have what we call skill modules for that. So it knows that, okay, you're giving me the task of doing pick and place, which this is. Ah, what do you want me to pick? How do you want me to pick it? So this system actually has knowledge of the gripper. Uh, so the gripper you see attached to the vision system, it do have knowledge of that. Very similarly to a high school engineer, it would know that you have an arm. So we tell the system that you have an arm and you can grip it this way. So given those few elements, the system can reason about the task and perform the duties here. So what's interesting is that when you look at 5G applications, it's perfectly suitable for this. Because today you're starting to see a little bit um, movable robotics in the factory. So you can have a robot on a platform that moves around 
and we would like to offer these as a service on mobile platforms. So while you're moving something in a factory, you are performing different tasks at the same time. And in order to do that and have the edge connectivity, things like 5G is perfect. If you look out long term, this is a real game changer because you're looking at truly autonomous manufacturing, end-to-end -end black factories.